The Kurgan hypothesis also known as the Kurgan theory or Kurgan model or step theory is the most widely accepted proposal to identify the Proto-Indo-European homeland from which the Indo-European languages spread out throughout Europe, Eurasia and parts of Asia. It postulates that the people of a Kurgan culture in the Pontic steppe north of the Black Sea were the most likely speakers of the Proto-Indo-European language The term is derived from the Russian Kurgan, Kurgan meaning tumulus or burial mound. The Kurgan hypothesis was first formulated in the 1950s by Maria Gimbutas, who used the term to group various cultures, including the Yamnaya, or pit grave, culture and its predecessors. David Anthony instead uses the core Yamnaya culture and its relationship with other cultures as a point of reference. Maria Gimbutas defined the Kurgan culture as composed of four successive periods, with the earliest Kurgan I including the Samara and Siroglazovo cultures of the Dnieper Volga region in the Copper Age early 4th millennium BC. The people of these cultures were nomadic pastoralists, who, according to the model, by the early 3rd millennium BC had expanded throughout the Pontic Caspian steppe and into Eastern Europe. Three genetic studies in 2015 gave partial support to Gimbutas's Kurgan theory regarding the Indo European Urheimat. According to those studies, haplogroups R1b and R1a, now the most common in Europe R1a is also common in South Asia would have expanded from the Russian and Ukrainian steppes, along with the Indo-European languages. They also detected an autosomal component present in modern Europeans which was not present in Neolithic Europeans, which would have been introduced with paternal lineages R1b and R1a, as well as Indo-European languages. History. Topic. Predecessors Arguments for the identification of the Proto-Indo-Europeans as steppe nomads from the Pontic Caspian region had already been made in the 19th century by German philologists Theodor Benfi and especially Otto Schrader. In his standard work about Pi and to a greater extent in a later abbreviated version, Karl Brugmann took the view that the Urheimat could not be identified exactly at that time, but he tended toward Schrader's view. However, after Karl Penke's 1883 rejection of non-European origins, most scholars favored a northern European origin. The view of a Pontic origin was still strongly favored, e.g., by the archaeologists V. Gordon Childe and Ernst Wall. One of Wall's students was Jonas Puzinas, who in turn was one of Gimbutas's teachers. Gimbutas, who acknowledges Schrader as a precursor, was able to marshal a wealth of archaeological evidence from the territory of the Soviet Union and other countries then belonging to the Eastern Bloc not readily available to scholars from Western countries, enabling her to achieve a fuller picture of prehistoric Europe. Topic. Overview When it was first proposed in 1956, in The Prehistory of Eastern Europe, Part 1, Maria Gimbutas's contribution to the search for Indo-European origins was an interdisciplinary synthesis of archaeology and linguistics. The Kurgan model of Indo-European origins identifies the Pontic Caspian steppe as the Proto-Indo-European Pi or Heimat, and a variety of late Pi dialects are assumed to have been spoken across the region. According to this model, the Kurgan culture gradually expanded until it encompassed the entire Pontic Caspian steppe, Kurgan IV being identified with the Yamnaya culture of around 3000 BC. The mobility of the Kurgan culture facilitated its expansion over the entire region, and is attributed to the domestication of the horse and later the use of early chariots. The first strong archaeological evidence for the domestication of the horse comes from the Sredny Stog culture north of the Azov Sea in Ukraine, and would correspond to an early Pi or pre-Pi nucleus of the 5th millennium BC. Subsequent expansion beyond the steppes led to hybrid, or in Gimbutas's terms, Kurganized cultures, such as the globular amphora culture to the west. From these Kurganized cultures came the immigration of Proto-Greeks to the Balkans and the nomadic Indo-Iranian cultures to the east around 2500 BC. Topic: <inaudible> Kurgan culture. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Cultural horizon. Gimbutas defined and introduced the term Kurgan culture in 1956 with the intention of introducing a broader term that would combine Sredny Stog II, Pit Grave, and Corded Ware Horizons spanning the 4th to 3rd millennia in much of eastern and northern Europe. The model of a Kurgan culture 
brings together the various cultures of the Copper Age to Early Bronze Age 5th to 3rd millennia BC Pontic Caspian Steppe to justify their identification as a single archaeological culture or cultural horizon, based on similarities among them. The eponymous construction of Kurgan's mound graves is only one among several factors. As always in the grouping of archaeological cultures, the dividing line between one culture and the next cannot be drawn with hard precision and will be open to debate. Cultures that Gimbut is considered as part of the Kurgan culture. Bug Nister, sixth millennium. Samara, fifth millennium. Kvalinsk, fifth millennium. Dnieper Donetsk, fifth to fourth millennia. Sredni Stog, mid fifth to mid fourth millennia. Mykop Derevka, mid fourth to mid third millennia. Yamnaya, pit grave. This is itself a varied cultural horizon, spanning the entire Pontic Caspian steppe from the mid fourth to the third millennium. USA Tovo culture, late fourth millennium. Topic: Stages of culture and expansion. Gimbutas's original suggestion identifies four successive stages of the Kurgan culture. Kurgan I, Dnieper, Volga region, earlier half of the 4th millennium BC. Apparently evolving from cultures of the Volga basin, subgroups include the Samara and Siroglazovo cultures. Kurgan E3, latter half of the 4th millennium BC. Includes the Sredni Stog culture and the Makop culture of the northern Caucasus. Stone circles, anthropomorphic stone stelae of deities. Kurgan IV or Pit Grave Culture, first half of the 3rd millennium BC, encompassing the entire steppe region from the Ural to Romania. In other publications, she proposes three successive waves of expansion. Wave 1, predating Kurgan I, expansion from the lower Volga to the Dnieper, leading to coexistence of Kurgan I and the Kukuteni Tripolia culture. Repercussions of the migrations extend as far as the Balkans and along the Danube to the Vinca culture in Serbia and Lengyel culture in Hungary. Wave 2, mid-4th millennium BC, originating in the Makop culture and resulting in advances of Kurganized hybrid cultures into northern Europe around 3000 BC globular amphora culture, Baden culture, and ultimately corded ware culture. According to Gimbutas this corresponds to the first intrusion of Indo-European languages into Western and Northern Europe. Wave 3, 3000-2800 BC, expansion of the pit grave culture beyond the steppes, with the appearance of the characteristic pit graves as far as the areas of modern Romania, Bulgaria, Eastern Hungary and Georgia, coincident with the end of the Cucuteni Tripolia culture and Trileti culture in Georgia c. 2750 BC. Topic. Timeline 4500-4000, Early Pi. Sredni Stog, Dnieper Donets and Samara cultures, domestication of the horse wave 1 4000-3500, the pit grave culture aka Yamnaya culture, the prototypical Kurgan builders, emerges in the steppe, and the Makop culture in the northern Caucasus. Indo-Hittite models postulate the separation of Proto-Anatolian before this time. 3500-3000, Middle Pi. The pit grave culture is at its peak, representing the classical reconstructed Proto-Indo-European society with stone idols, predominantly practicing animal husbandry in permanent settlements protected by hillforts, subsisting on agriculture, and fishing along rivers. Contact of the pit grave culture with late Neolithic Europe cultures results in the Kurganized globular amphora and Baden cultures wave two. The Makop culture shows the earliest evidence of the beginning Bronze Age, and bronze weapons and artifacts are introduced to pit grave territory. Probable early satimization 3000-2500, late Pi. The pit grave culture extends over the entire Pontic steppe wave 3. The corded ware culture extends from the Rhine to the Volga, corresponding to the latest phase of Indo-European unity, the vast, Kurganized. Area disintegrating into various independent languages and cultures, still in loose contact enabling the spread of technology and early loans between the groups, except for the Anatolian and Tocharian branches, which are already isolated from these processes. The centum satum break is probably complete, but the phonetic trends of satimization remain active. Topic. Further expansion during the Bronze Age 
The Kurgan hypothesis describes the initial spread of Proto-Indo-European during the 5th and 4th millennia BC. As used by Gimbutas, the term, Kurganized, implied that the culture could have been spread by no more than small bands who imposed themselves on local people as an elite. This idea of the Pi language and its daughter languages diffusing east and west without mass movement proved popular with archaeologists in the 1970s the Pots Not People paradigm. The question of further Indo-Europeanization of Central and Western Europe, Central Asia and Northern India during the Bronze Age is beyond its scope, far more uncertain than the events of the Copper Age, and subject to some controversy. The rapidly developing field of archaeogenetics and genetic genealogy since the late 1990s has not only confirmed a migratory pattern out of the Pontic steppe at the relevant time, it also suggests the possibility that the population movement involved was more substantial than anticipated. Topic. Revisions Topic. Invasion versus diffusion scenarios 1980s onward. Gimbutas believed that the expansions of the Kurgan culture were a series of essentially hostile military incursions where a new warrior culture imposed itself on the peaceful, matrilinear hereditary through the female line, matrifocal, though egalitarian cultures of old Europe replacing it with a patriarchal warrior society, a process visible in the appearance of fortified settlements and hillforts and the graves of warrior chieftains. The process of Indo-Europeanization was a cultural, not a physical, transformation. It must be understood as a military victory in terms of successfully imposing a new administrative system, language, and religion upon the indigenous groups. In her later life, Gimbutas increasingly emphasized the authoritarian nature of this transition from the egalitarian process of the nature, earth mother goddess Gaia to a patriarchal society and the worship of the father, son, weather god Zeus, Dias. This supposed egalitarian, mother goddess worshipping society is not the same as a matriarchy in Gimbutas's view. Matriarchal hierarchy structures in Gimbutas's opinion are the same as a patriarchal society, not the actual opposite, an egalitarian society without hierarchy. J. P. Mallory accepted the Kurgan hypothesis as the de facto standard theory of Indo-European origins, but he recognized criticism of any alleged, but not actually stated, radical. Scenario of military invasion, the slow accumulation of influence through coercion or extortion, Gimbutas's actual main scenario, was often taken as general and immediate rating and then conquest. One might at first imagine that the economy of argument involved with the Kurgan solution should oblige us to accept it outright. But critics do exist and their objections can be summarized quite simply. Almost all of the arguments for invasion and cultural transformations are far better explained without reference to Kurgan expansions, and most of the evidence so far presented is either totally contradicted by other evidence, or is the result of gross misinterpretation of the cultural history of Eastern, Central, and Northern Europe. Topic. Alignment with Anatolian Hypothesis 2000s. Alberto Piazza and Luigi Luca Cavalli Sforza have tried in the 2000s to align the Anatolian hypothesis with the step theory. According to Alberto Piazza, writing in 2000, it is clear that, genetically speaking, peoples of the Kurgan steppe descended at least in part from people of the Middle Eastern Neolithic who immigrated there from Turkey. According to Piazza and Cavalli Sforza 2006, the Yamna culture may have been derived from Middle Eastern Neolithic farmers who migrated to the Pontic steppe and developed pastoral nomadism. Wells agrees with Cavalli Sforza that there is "...some genetic evidence for migration from the Middle East." Nevertheless, the Anatolian hypothesis has been rejected, since it is incompatible with the going data on the genetic history of the Yamnaya people. Anthony's Revised Step Theory 2007. David Anthony's The Horse, The Wheel and Language describes his revised step theory. David Anthony considers the term Kurgan culture so lacking in precision as to be useless, instead using the core Yamnaya culture and its relationship with other cultures as a point of reference. He points out that the Kurgan culture was so broadly defined that almost any culture with burial mounds, or even like the Baden culture without them could be included. 
He does not include the Maykop culture among those that he considers to be IE speaking, presuming instead that they spoke a Caucasian language. Topic see also Hamangia culture animal sacrifice Ashvaida shaft tomb late glacial maximum revised Kurgan theory genics archaeogenetics of Europe haplogroup R1 a competing hypotheses Proto-Indo-European or Heimat hypotheses Armenian hypothesis Anatolian hypothesis out of India theory Paleolithic continuity theory topic Notes topic References topic Bibliography topic Further reading Gimbutas, Maria Dexter, Miriam Robbins, Jones Blay, Colleen, eds. The Kurgan Culture and the Indo-Europeanization of Europe, Selected Articles from 1952 to 1993. Journal of Indo-European Studies Monograph Series No. 18. Institute for the Study of Man. ISBN 978-0941694568-8. Mallory, J. P. In Search of the Indo-Europeans, Language, Archaeology, and Myth Reprint ed., London, Thames and Hudson, ISBN 0-500-27616-1 Anthony, David W. The Horse the Wheel and Language. How Bronze Age Riders from the Eurasian Steppes Shaped the Modern World. Princeton University Press. Topic external links Humanjourney. Us, the Indo-Europeans, Charlene Spretnik 2011, Anatomy of a Backlash, Concerning the Work of Maria Gimbutas, Journal of Archaeomythology.